G'day. In today's video, I'm doing a bit of a hardware upgrade on a Acer Predator Orion 3000. I'll be putting in an NVMe drive, a silicon power 512 gig, and I'm going to be putting in some Corsair Dominator RGB RAM. To begin with, you're going to need some Phillips head screws, or remove two Phillips head screws off the back, and the side panel will slide backwards from there. Having a look on the inside here, we can see a single stick of DDR4 8 gig in there, or at least I believe it's the 8 gig. Will I take a peek? Yep, 8 gig, 2666. So the RAM that we're putting in is 3200 megahertz. Now, one thing I did note during this installation is that if you use full size RAM, like this stuff with the heat spreader on there, it will actually clip on the DVD burner that's in there. So you cannot use the slot furthest to the right with some RAM with a heat spreader on there. When you go to install your RAM, you gotta line up the pin or on the bottom of the RAM, there's a small little cutout, which you can see to the left just now. You gotta align that to the correct spot on the board. So right now I believe I'm going to use socket three or two and three for this RAM. And the customer has asked to retain the original eight gig in there. So this will be going back to its original slot. And I'll proceed from there. And next up, if you're wanting to upgrade the hard drive, you're going to have to take out the DVD ROM, which is in the, in the front of the machine, relatively center. There's a tab on there that you can push on that should release it. And you will also need to take off the front faceplate, which, sorry, but I don't, didn't really catch the footage on that one in, when I, during filming. But you will find underneath the 3.5 inch bay, well, as you can see, we've got one removed front panel. Next up, this tray here needs to come out, which is held in by Phillips head screws. Luckily, unlike other brands, on this particular case, everything seems to be Phillips head screws, which is nice and straightforward and self-serviceable, as opposed to using the proprietary torque head or various other screws. And I've still got that stuck. I've got two more to remove right here. So there's four holding this in total. Another thing to note, this runs a, I believe it's a 450 watt power supply which does leave you reasonably open to what graphics cards you could put in there. You may be able to go up to something like a 1660 Super. That would probably fall safe within the power requirements. And as we see here, we have a, I believe it was a one terabyte Toshiba drive. Nice and cheap. So next up, we've got to remove the actual ROM bay out of, the, well, out of here which is also just some more Phillips head screws from the front. Once you've got them, you should be able to move it out of the way and see a nest of cables. And if I zoom down in here, you will be able to see the M.2 slot there. So the NVMe M.2. And we do have a couple of extra SATA ports available. So I'm just gonna unplug the power the power supply also does have an extra six pin power for graphics. And as we can see, I'll proceed to install the M.2 in here. Sadly, Acer didn't include the actual screw to tie it, or to hold it down. So I did have to go through my little box of screws to get one. But I'm gonna proceed with the install from here. And I hope this helps knowing what you can upgrade in your Orion 3000. With these few little tweaks, it should net a fairly decent speed. So personally, I would have went with dual channel 16 gig rather than 24 gig in single channel. But down the line, with the NVMe in there, 24 gig of RAM, add in something like a 1660 Super, and this would be a very capable gaming machine. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.